Thank you very much. I would like to welcome you here to our presentation. My name is Manuel Di Cerbo. This is my partner in project, Andreas Rudolf. And we are really happy here to be at the Droikon in Berlin to show you our project and to give you an insight in what you can do with Android that is a bit outside of a typical application. And um, with that said, um, we would like to thank the organization here to invite us for the presentation. And um, typically, at the start of uh, our presentations, I ask the people here, um, who of you is developing Android applications uh, or ever has uh, done some Java application with Android? Please raise hands so we know a bit. Okay. So for you guys, we planned uh, in this presentation something special. We want to talk a bit uh, about how you can realize your hardware together with Android and to go into, well, some minor detail um, about how to hook up USB to your Android device or a USB gadget and what options you have and what the pitfalls are. <coughs> so, um, first of all, we would like to introduce our project. I'm going through it really quickly. Um, what it is about, uh, what the goals are, where it is coming from. And I would start, I would like to start with the first uh, photograph. You uh, received a small flyer with the device on it, so you um, get an idea what we're talking about. This picture here is like our uh, hardware product of the, of the project. And um, it is at the center of this presentation. It is a USB oscilloscope and it is completely open source from bottom to top. And it's not only the hardware, we're also doing software uh, for it. And this is as well open source and the protocol between hardware and software is open as well. So you can, uh, if you're interested, you can implement either your own hardware or your own software or, you know, read into it and find your inspiration in the project. So uh, we start with the roots of the project. It was actually at the University of Applied Science in Switzerland. Um, we created a semester project first and then a bachelor thesis. And the background was uh, the project using Android in industrial automation. So in 2009, when the project started, we didn't have tablets. We didn't have uh, really capable phones with USB host. So what we did have is um, and the, the BeagleBoard, it is a, a microprocessor platform with an ARM controller on it. And we used it as platform for Android and created a first project in 2009, uh, an Android Spectrum Analyzer. And what we did in the project is we learned how to, use, how to compile the kernel, how to compile Android, uh, get some insight in the platform. Obviously, there was not a lot of documentation. Uh, today, you will find a lot more documentation about the Android, Android platform part. But at the time there, we, uh, we were doing active research, if you will. So uh, it gave us an insight not only into Android, but also into micro pro well, microcontroller programming uh, for USB, which is a really essential part of the application. As a product, we have a, a technical blog, android.serverbox.ch. Uh, um, I invite you to have a look at it. Maybe you already stumbled upon it. Um, we're talking about embedded Android there. We're talking about how to connect your device to an Arduino and do communication and so on. We have great tutorials, so it might be a, a point for you to um, be interested in. So the project itself looked a bit like this. It was. Uh, well, very rudimentary. Um, basically, you have an embedded platform on the bottom right. It is the Beagle board, and you hooked it up to HDMI with HDMI to a, to a screen. And then on the top left, you have uh, the hardware front end, which is actually a microcontroller, uh, USB microcontroller, um, which does all the well, which is uh, responsible for transferring uh, data to the remote system, the Beagle board. So, and hooked up to the microcontroller, we had some AD converter uh, hooked up via I2C, and it was really slow. I, I'm talking about 
12 kilo samples uh, with with 8 bit. So, um, well, it was a proof of concept, and um, we wanted to um, show that, or you know, to find out if Android is capable of doing embedded system tasks. And well, it worked, and it was really cool. But the fun part was the next project. It was our bachelor thesis, and until uh, to the end of the studies, we worked on it really hard. It was called the OSC1 oscilloscope. So the platform of Android was the same. We had the Beagle board. It was Android running on it. We um, were doing a very similar task, but this time at the much higher sampling rate. So we used that uh, microcontroller that we had, that FX2 microcontroller, and we fired it up to uh, 12 mega samples. Well, actually, you could probably go even higher. However, it felt like a stable uh, data rate uh, for our project, and that was uh, why we've chosen it at that time. So what we did is not only we had we did not only have a, a software part that we did for Android, but also a hardware part. We designed uh, a hardware from scratch, and it looked at the end like this, uh, which is an oscilloscope. So you have the um, the probe connectors, you have a USB connector, and what you do is you actually measure signals. And um, the acquisition desk, a data acquisition desk, looked a bit like this. So you had a, a screen, a keyboard, a mouse. Um, we had the Android board, uh, well, slash embedded platform running our application. And then you had the external hardware connected via USB uh, that was acting as an oscilloscope. And of course, um, today you wouldn't expect to look at it like this. You want it on a smartphone or a tablet, and that's what all further development was about. So uh, at the end of the, um, of the semester, um, we gathered quite a lot of knowledge about Android, embedded Android, embedded Linux, and so on. And so we took the knowledge and uh, we founded a company back in 2007, Nexus Computing. Um, maybe the name will have some irritations here. Um, we were first, so just to say we were in 2007 and uh, we still believe that um, the product is named after us. So. <laughs> cool. Um, well, the cool thing is uh, we, we already got like uh, the basic fundamentals for a company and we said, okay, in 2010 we finished with the studies, let's do Android and let's, you know, further develop the project on the side. You know, we were, of course, uh, we were needed to do projects and find like work for us, but on the side we always... Uh, kept developing the hardware and the software as well as the technical block and everything at, as open source. And so uh, you can go to our website, ossiprime.com, or you will find the link on Nexus Computing, uh, and you will find everything about Aussie Prime um, from really good documentation uh, of the technical report uh, up to source code uh, and layouts and stuff. So, um, enough about that. Now, the talk should be more about this. This neat little box is a, a typical oscilloscope, how you would find it, um, how you still find it today in labs. And uh, please show hands who, hands, uh, who already knows what an oscilloscope is or what this machine does. Okay, that's like the majority here. Um, I'm really pleased, so I won't lose a lot of time explaining you what it does. However, just as a quick abstract, it measures voltage signals over, over a period of time. And compared to a voltage meter, you have uh, the ability here to look over a few seconds or milliseconds how the voltage level on a signal actually looks like, uh, where a voltage meter only shows you how much um, power or voltage or whatever you have at the current point in time. So we wanted to create something like this, however, in a bit, in a bit different uh, form. So what you have here is uh, the concept art of the OSC1 project, what, which we did at the University of Applied Science. So the bachelor thesis, you have a custom hardware front end on the top. You hook it up via USB to the Beagle board, and then you display it on a screen with, and you know, you control Android with a mouse. What needs to change, of course, and 
we realized that, well, at the beginning of the project already, is <coughs> you want a tablet or a, a smartphone opera acting as USB host and powering the device and, you know, be able to uh, have the scope really in a mobile fashion and take it uh, with you wherever you want. So that was the goal for us, and during the past two years we worked uh, to bring the project to a standpoint uh, that looks a bit like this. Now, um, we would like to uh, first show you what, what changed since the, pro, uh, since the bachelor thesis. We realized the uh, software uh, a bit differently. Uh, for instance, we don't require you to have root. You know, on the Beagle board, of course, you have root if you're doing embedded development. Uh, that's a given. Um, on mobile hardware, it's not easily. Uh, to find that, and we don't want to force our users to root their phones. And what we, we also did, we, went, we wanted to revamp the user interface to actually match uh, a tablet or a phone where you have a touch screen and not operate it with a mouse. So that's what we did on the software side. And the hardware, it stayed pretty much the same other uh, than a few very important cosmetics, which you have to do if you want to actually make a small batch of production, a prototype production batch. So first of all, uh, we have a four layer layout um, of the hardware. It was two layers. Uh, it's a bit more compact, as well as all the, the components are now mounted on top. So in the prototype, we had like components on, on the back side of the board, which is okay if you hand solder it, but if at any time you want to go into a, a small production or anything, you can't have that. So um, Andreas will give you now an overview of the hardware, and afterwards we will hear a bit more about the software and to see a small demo. Thank you. Thank you, Manuel. Uh, my name is Andreas Rudolf, and I too like to welcome all of you to the presentation of the OsteoPrime uh, project. As indicated in the following slides, we're going to have a closer look into the uh, custom front end. And as you can see to the left, the inputs to this uh, hardware board is uh, coming from the oscilloscope probes. We designed it for use with common oscilloscope probes. Uh, you would need a 10 to 1 probe uh, for this case. And this is an analog signal. And the output from the uh, custom front end is a USB port and there you of course have digitalized data. So uh, what, is, what are the main tasks of the custom front end? can be somehow uh, summarized. Um, since we have analog voltages coming in and digitalized data going out, of course somewhere the heart piece somehow is an analog to digital converter. And this is in the middle here. And um, yeah, since we have analog, analog voltages going in, of course it would be nice if there were uh, analog to digital converters that have like huge ranges going from uh, plus 20 to minus 20 volts, but of course they only work in a predefined range. So somehow these uh, analog signals, they need to be adapted and uh, then they, co they, they can be, then they can be um, uh, sampled in the AD converters. And after we have digitalized data, uh, these data samples, they just go into the USB controller. There's this so-called FIFO queue, first in, first out, and then they're transferred over to the tablet. And also here we have a picture. It's the same picture that you received with your uh, flyer. Uh, again, we see to the left there are the um, coaxial probe inputs. This is for the oscilloscope probes. Uh, then these signals are adapted in the yeah with the op amps. Then about in the middle there is the AD ADC the analog to digital converter, and afterwards there's the CPLD and the FX2 FX2 is the microcontroller the USB microcontroller. And uh, now as you would imagine, mm -hmm. uh, first the uh, modeling, designing, assembling and manufacturing these boards all requires quite a lot of effort and a lot of uh, attention to details. However, during this presentation, we're only going to have a, 
look at a much uh, simplified version. And that's shown here. Again, to the left are the probes, on the right is the USB cable. Um, the, signal, the signal coming into the uh, coaxial probe inputs is adapted in what we like to call the analog front end. Then in the middle we have the analog to digital converters. And then there's the digital front end that feeds the, um, yeah, the USB uh, controller and also the USB cable. Um, now, you might ask yourself why there e even is a CPLD on board. Um, well, that's just there for um, yeah, changing the different uh, voltage amplifications and also there's some circuitry on it to have different modes like different speeds or dual channel, single channel and stuff like that. So that's it for the custom front end. Manuel will now give you a closer insight into the uh, Android application. Thank you very much, Andreas. Um, for the DroidCon here, I put together a few slides, um, especially for developers here who are interested in uh, getting into USB connecting their hardware. <laughs> hardware? Excuse me. Um, and I have a few illustrations now that involve um, another hardware, not an oscilloscope, but um, it is for conceptual use. So in the pictures now, we are uh, looking at the uh, Arduino Due, which is a, a microcontroller platform that can act as USB host uh, or as USB device. So if you have a, a project in mind and you want to connect your hardware how, somewhere somehow to your Android device, there's like two options. You have uh, with USB, you, you have the um, opportunity to, use, to do it with the Android accessory API slash ADK, um, which uh, has it pro, its pros and cons, or you can use it with the USB host API of Android, which also has some good points and some worse points. And uh, in the picture here, first, I want to show you uh, how you can do it with the accessory API. So you have your Android device, and the Android device is acting as a USB device. So you hook it up like a mouse to your microcontroller here on to the Arduino Due. And the Arduino Due is the USB host, so it will power your device, and it will uh, initiate communication. And uh, for the Arduino Due, your Android device is just a slave. Now what you can do is you can use uh, the accessory API to communicate with your hardware. However, you have to power your external hardware, the Arduino Due, with some kind of battery or network power supply, whatever. And in some cases, uh, that's not really optimal. So, and then the other way. The other way around is your Android device, it acts as USB host, it powers your uh, external hardware, and then uh, you're, not, um, you're not forced to carry around uh, another battery for your microcontroller. So this is uh, certainly a way um, that's probably pretty appealing if you have some uh, sensor that you want to take out to the field. So that's what you can do, and that's what the illustration, uh, illustrations here are for. So uh, going a bit further, if you evaluate those two things, you have to always keep in mind, if you use USB host, your device will power your gadget or whatever you have, which is really cool. On the other hand, it will also drain the battery of your tablet or smartphone or whatever. And on the other hand, uh, the accessory API, it will power your phone and your phone will charge from it uh, and therefore needs uh, to have another power supply. That's, that's okay if you're in a fitness center and you know you have some training bike or, or rowboat or whatever. Um, and there's anyway a power plug, but if you're in the field, you don't necessarily uh, want that. Okay, and then there's like transfer rates. If you're using USB host on Android, you can go up to 30 megabytes a second, depending on the device. Um, uh, maybe you hit like 25 or 27 megabytes a second, but that's really okay. And on the other hand, if you have the ADK or the accessory API, um, that's uh, a lot, uh, yeah, sig significantly less data rate you're getting out of it. So 
Then the sad part on both those uh, approaches is they're not really uh, widely consistently supported. For instance, Nexus 4 doesn't uh, support USB host mode. Uh, on the other hand, there's like plenty of devices that have the kernel driver that support USB host, like Samsung has, for instance, some, or, um, yeah, well, that's the, the one that pops into my mind. And they allow you to hook up your um, USB flash storage. However, they somehow left out the, the part where they open the API to developers and it's actually not working. So that's like the number one uh, complaint that we're hearing on our blog that users have devices and you know uh, although it supports USB on the go somehow the framework uh, isn't laid out for it. And also for the accessory API we have some similar problems. So you have many devices that support it and others you know that randomly don't support it. So that's quite a sad story. So if you want to ever uh, develop your own gadget or accessory, um, you should keep that in mind. So about uh, the OSI Prime, back to the OSI Prime, we're using USB host. We're uh, actually sampling at 12 megabytes, um, well, six mega samples per channel. So we're transferring the entire 12 megabytes per second to the device and it's working pretty good. What we need to do here um, in the, uh, well, in the cycle is we need to use the Java native interface to process the data since Java itself is a bit too slow. So if you have a project where you have uh, large buffers and are interested in, you know, making it faster, you can certainly look at our source code and, and see how we, we've implemented it since um, documentation around JNI is really scarce uh, at the moment. So, so what we do is we constantly uh, issue USB bulk in transfers to our device. We don't have the device class, so it's just plain bulk transfers and it's really uh, easy to implement. Okay, Andreas is going to tell you now uh, a bit more about how you can get started uh, when you want to do your own hardware in terms of uh, your own print and layout and stuff. Thank you. Um, so what you see here is our um in-house assembly station, uh, so to speak. As you can see, it's just a simple table. And um, well, the reason for this is that we bring it up during this presentation is that we built the first uh, about 10 prototypes by hand and we want to share our experiences. Uh, if ever you want to create some prototypes, uh, what's the easiest way to do it? So um, what we used for our prototypes was uh, a technique called reflowing. And it's basically uh, with, with the reflowing technique, you don't solder your components by hand. Uh, however, you, you apply some kind of, yeah, it's called a, a soldering uh, paste, it's much like toothpaste in a way. Uh, and you apply, it to, you apply this soldering paste to your board and then you put it in an oven and after about five minutes, uh, the soldering, the solder melts and your yeah. components um, will be, um, yeah, your, your, your components will be on the board afterwards. And usually it has really good results. Um, so what you need if you want to do this, uh, you will need uh, this oven, like a make microwave oven. It costs about 120 euros, so it's not all that much. Also, the whole equipment here is maybe around 300 euros. And of course, what you would need is you need a bare PCB and you can get this manufactured at various places. Uh, we have manufactured our first PCBs at um, PCB pool or also sometimes it's called beta layout here in Germany. And uh, what uh, the good part about uh, PCB pool is uh, that you also get a free stencil. And the stencil is like an aluminium um, yeah, plate and it has really small holes in it where the, um, the footprints of your components will be. So what you need to do is uh, you fix your uh, PCB and then you put the stencil on top of it and then you apply this uh, soldering paste. Uh, you should, yeah, you, you have some kind of pellet nice and then you put it over it 
and when you take it away then the, the soldering paste will stay where your footprints were and then you use some kind of tweezers and put your components on there. And of course uh, you need to be somehow somewhat careful because some of the components have uh, maybe 100 pins uh, so yeah but you will get there and if you yeah, you need some practice of course. Uh, afterwards yeah, you will put it in the oven for about five minutes and uh, if you do this enough times you'll get uh, a few prototypes. Uh, as we said most of the times if you use this oven, this technique uh, it's, yeah, it has pretty good results but sometimes two uh, pins they are still connected with soldering paste something like that so one important tool that you need is a soldering station and uh, it's especially useful if you also have a hot air gun on there. So uh, in this model was only about 70 euros. It's, I think it's somewhere from Hong Kong or something like that. So, but still we have uh, we've had really good um, experience with it. So. So to conclude our talk, uh, we are going to show a, a really quick demo of the application. Um, just before we are going to um, into the discussion part, um, I want to just address quickly uh, how the project is looking. We have some ideas about upcoming features that need to be uh, addressed. But first of all, um, we were able now to um, create a small batch of uh, produced boards and we're selling them online for 250 Swiss francs that's translating to about I don't know 220 euros or something and um, we're still selling them so that's really good and uh, actually we get uh, we get quite some orders well you know we're not rich or anything but um, the entire development if you ever you know want to do something like that you need to invest a lot of money and a lot of time to get that, uh, that far and um, we can tell you at this point, you know, uh, without a, a large investor or something, it will um, <coughs> it will make you happy at the end. But um, it's uh, also um, at times really tiring and uh, really intense. So, um, but we're really happy with the product. We get a lot of nice feedback. We uh, have people sending us videos how they use uh, our oscilloscope application on Android. And we, we've cho chosen a, a quite a bit different um, business model on the software part. So we're giving out the application completely open source. You can go to our website and download the binary as well, the source code for free. However, if you go to the Play Store, we're asking five Swiss francs of the um, of the community or you know of, of the user to support the project and um, by now we've sold around 500 copies of the software and uh, you know it's not a lot but we're surprised that you know people go and say okay I'm paying those five uh, five boxes it's, uh, it's a good project and you know if you have an open source project this might be uh, an approach for you as well since you know donate programs they don't work really well and um, with that, you know, you have a much more straightforward approach. So upcoming features of the board, if you have purchased the device already, um, you have hardware features that are not supported yet by the software. We have a, a single channel mode where you can sample up to 24 mega samples. Um, you can also do a dual channel mode with 12 mega samples and you can already access it through some debugging features of the application. However, we didn't um, streamline it yet um, with, with the current re release. So we're planning to do that uh, until you know end of May. We're, we're targeting summer to get uh, features out. Then also we were uh, asked about more of buffering and exporting, exporting features and we're uh, definitely looking into that. So and if you have some ideas you want to uh, share with us, you know, go download our application, check it out. You can do it for free on osciprime.com. Um, we're always happy to, to hear feedback. And now I would like uh, to go into the demo part. So I'm just switching here. 
Ja, ich weiß. So, I'm showing here. I'm showing here um, only the the audio feature. Uh, we do, did, don't have it hooked up here to the hardware. Oh, no, 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 it's okay. I think uh, we don't have it hooked up to the hardware. We're going to do it uh, just a second in the launch break. We're uh, you know for 10 minutes or so we're uh, displaying it there on the table. But here, just for the features, you have a, like a multi-touch area here where you can zoom in and out. You have like sliders where you can measure uh, frequency and voltage. And if you stop data acquisition, you have here a small buffer window where you can slide through your buffer. Of course, you can change uh, background color to whatever you like, um, interface color and so on. You have control over how many uh, points you want to display, which channel you want to display. You have an indication of the, of the range. Um, then you have features like a single shot, where data acquisi acquisition stops for a moment, and then you can uh, zoom in to uh, the buffer. And then features like interleaf, and uh, you can also export a screenshot, cool. and you know, send it to your best friend as de desktop background. If you want, want to. <laughs> Your finger snip sound. <laughs> so uh, I think we're at the time limit. Um, no, that's fine. I want to thank you very much for your attention. I hope uh, you enjoy, enjoyed the talk and uh, hope to hear from you around. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. That was interesting. <clears throat>